Hi readers, this is Ms. Harris with you today for evaluating authors' claims in our informational persuasive text. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with this today. Our learning goal is to evaluate the author's claim in a text. Overall, the reason for this is that good readers can evaluate whether an author's argument is compelling based on the reasons and evidence that the author provides to support his or her claims. So as readers, we're going to be reading all kinds of different articles and information in our lives, but we have to be able to really um, evaluate what the author is saying and seeing if their evidence or their claims are good enough to support what they are saying. All right, so let's go over some vocabulary because the vocabulary matters with this. First thing is we're going to have to be able to identify the author's claim. So an author makes a claim to support an argument. So claims are assertions the author presents as accurate. These can be statements about what is true, good, better, what should be done, or what should be believed. And then we go into reasons, which, I mean, we give reasons all the time. So a reason is a statement that supports a claim. A reason um, answers the question, why does the author believe the claim to be true? And this leads us right into the big piece that we're really looking at today, which is uh, evidence. So we can have our reasons, but the evidence is really what kind of solidifies the claim to be true and really persuasive for us to believe what the author is saying. So evidence supports reasons by providing examples, narratives, but specifically statistics, expert opinions, eyewitness accounts, scientific research, or historical events. All right, so this vocabulary really matters. And here in your classroom today, you're gonna to be doing a little active engagement. Um, if you are at home, you may go ahead and pause right here and try this out on your own, just doing a little practice of identifying the author's purpose, the author's claim, and two pieces of really good solid evidence. Remember, the solid evidence would be those expert opinions, statistics, eyewitness accounts, scientific research, or historical, of, historical events. All right, so now let's get into the article that we're gonna be working with today. So we're really looking at, should you get paid to recycle? So first we're gonna start with the whole, kind of the situation of this. So it's over here on the left-hand side. So recycling bottles and cans is the right thing to do. So should we really get rewarded for doing it? So the situation over here, the U.S. produces nearly 300 million tons of trash each year. So what happens to all that garbage? About half of it ends up in landfills where it will sit for centuries, giving off harmful gases as it slowly degrades. A lot of trash also ends up in lakes and rivers, on beaches and out in the ocean, where it can harm plants and animals. Recycling helps keep a lot of waste out of landfills and places where it can cause harm. Cardboard and paper typically go into a paper mill. There, they get made into new paper products like cereal boxes and notebooks. Plastic, glass, and metal go to a separate facility where giant machines crush or melt them so they can be used for new items like soda bottles and tuna fish cans. Today, in most places in the United States, or US, you can leave your recyclables, your milk cartons, your yogurt cups, and mac and cheese boxes outside on the curb, and the city will pick them up and recycle them for you. But 10 states also have what are known as bottle bills. In these states, everyone pays more, an extra two to 15 cents per bottle or can for certain drinks. If you turn the empty bottles and cans in for recycling by taking them to a redemption center or putting them into what's known as a reverse vending machine, you get that money back. These bottle bills have sparked a debate. Should we get paid to recycle? Or should doing the right thing be reward enough? All right, so today I'm gonna to demonstrate with the yes side of this. Um, give people a reason to recycle with Michelle Green. And you are actually going to be reading the no side of this. So just to kind of get us going with our work. So remember as readers, we need to be able to identify the author's claim and the really good evidence that that 
um, author has to support their thinking. All right, so here we go. Bottle bills are a great idea and more states should have them. So this is what I'm identifying as Michelle's claim. Um, so if we remember, the claim is to support the argument. So she's supporting this argument, yes. So her claim is bottle bills are a great idea and more states should have them. She's saying this is what is good, this is what should be done. That is her claim. And then as we continue reading, she has this heading that says bottle bills work. And as I said, bottle bills are effective. According to the Container Recycling Institute, 60% of beverage containers get recycled in the states with bottle bills. In the states that do not have bottle bills, recycling rates are only about 24%. And then she gives her reasons. So clearly giving people money encourages them to recycle. So she kind of sums that up. So really that good solid piece of text, or not text evidence, but her evidence to support her claim is right here according to the Container Recycling Institute. So if we go back, evidence is statistics, expert opinions, um, scientific research. That's, that's what she's got there. She's got those statistics as 60% and she's got the research from that Recycling Institute. All right, so there's one piece of evidence that supports her claim. Bottle bills are a great idea and more states should have them. So then as we continue reading, a 2019 study of trash along coastlines, where a lot of trash eventually, eventually ends up, found that in states without bottle bills, bottles and cans accounted for about 18% of all litter. In states without bottle bills, bottles and cans accounted for less than 9% of all litter. That's a really big difference. So again, she has the data, the statistics, um, from a study in 2019, that's some solid evidence to support her claim that bottle bills are a great idea and more states should have them. All right, and then we keep going in a perfect world. So we keep reading, we keep reading, and then I came across this fact. A 2016 EPA report found that recycling accounted for nearly 700,000 jobs. More evidence. This is another uh, statistic, it's an expert. So that's another piece of evidence to support her claim that bottle bills are a great idea. All right, so then that's really the big, huge part of the work that we're doing today. And then you'll see another little star down here um, where she informs us that Cans for Kids, it's a group that returns recyclables, recyclables and donates most of the money to get um, the Connecticut Children's Medical Centers so that they can have more money for their for the kids. So that's another piece of evidence, but you, you might be wondering what these little circles are here. So as you're doing your work today, you're not only looking for that claim and your evidence, if you'd like to step up your game a little bit, there is also this little scavenger hunt where you're gonna underline the central idea, which is what we did here, or the central claim star at least two pieces of supporting evidence so that's why you see that i have underlined and starred those pieces of supporting evidence and then i also did step three so circle the counter argument and then put a double star next to the writer's rebuttal so a counter argument is when the author goes ahead and gives you the other side or the other opinion in their own writing so here let's see how michelle did this so now some people believe we shouldn't need a reward for things that help the environment. And I agree. In a perfect world, we would all recycle simply because it's the right thing to do. So she's acknowledging that people are saying that we shouldn't be paid to do what's right. She, she understands that. But then her rebuttal is this next part. She says, but we don't live in a perfect world. So why not provide an extra incentive for people to recycle. What matters is that we all recycle as much as possible. The reason we do it is less important. So here's counter argument and here is rebuttal. There's are those examples for that. So here's your task for today. Um, this is the side that I've already done, the yes side. You're gonna be doing the no side and you're gonna be simply 
annotating, marking it up, make all kinds of notes. Um, and then you're gonna be answering, what is the author's claim? What are three pieces of evidence? And then complete the, remain the, the remainder of the scavenger hunt for this no piece by um, Jack Berman. And then finally, today's task, you must do um, complete today's learning task and upload to Canvas. And then I have a little timer in here for you to read for 20 minutes. As soon to be seventh graders, we need to make sure we're building that stamina, so make sure that you read. Then you can continue reading for enjoyment. You can write about your book and choose one of these following prompts to get you writing about the book that you're reading. Um, tomorrow, you will be working on extension activities. All right, so happy reading and enjoy. Please message your teachers with any questions. Happy reading.